everybody. Thanks for joining me here today. This is Nicole Paschal with Topaz Labs. Today we are going to have a quick tip webinar on how to avoid noise and halos and adjust and black and white effect. So with that, let's just go ahead and get started. Sometimes when working with adjust and black and white effects, when you're working with the adaptive exposure, which is one of our really special technologies in both of those programs, you will begin to get halos or, or some noise in flat areas like skies and faces. So I have a few tips for you to try to eliminate that problem that you might have. The first tip is processing independently. When, uh, on a default basis, the exposure and the details are going to be processed uh, simultaneously with each other, so they affect each other. If you process them independently of each other, you still get the adaptive exposure that will give you that pseudo HDR type of look as you start to push it higher and higher, but then you can process that separately from your details so you don't necessarily get that grungy look that will start to produce a lot of halos. This independent checkbox is in both adjust and black and white effects. This is definitely your friend. It is one of things I use the most when I'm trying to do a pseudo HDR type of look. Tip number two in adjust, definitely take advantage of the brush out local adjustment. This is the only program that we currently have this brush out feature, but it is really great and I'll show you an image where it really makes a difference. And tip number three, use the smooth brush very lightly in areas. This is available to you in both adjust and black and white effects and I'll show you the benefit in each. Again, this is a quick tip webinar. If you'd like an introduction webinar to either of these programs, it's available on our YouTube channel. And that's youtube.com slash topazlabs. So I'm just going to jump on into Adjust 5 to start off with this image. And I'm just going to come down here to reset all. So we start out with a, a flat image. Now, in our HDR collection, we have several different collections, but our HDR collection will start to give you that pseudo HDR look that's really well known um, it for adjust. But sometimes it can go a little too heavy. So if I go to maybe my medium pop grunge, here's before and after, immediately I, I like what I'm seeing. Uh, my Highlights are some details being brought into my highlights, some more tone. My low lights are starting to open up exactly what would happen if I had, was taking multiple exposures and stitching them all together. But I want to take this one step further and maybe go to the heavy pop grunge. Okay, here's before and here's after. I really like what I'm seeing, but I'm seeing some issues going on right away. First, I see some halos happening around uh, my metal right here, you can see that very uh, light white halo beginning to form. There's also some extra noise that's being formed in my clouds. Here's before, here's after, and there's some noise down here, a little too much uh, detail that I wasn't really wanting here. This, I wanted this area to stay quite smooth. Again, here's before and after. So the, the only thing I'm going to do to help this image out is go into my global adjustments, go into my adaptive exposure, just kidding, go into my details, I'm sorry about that, the details tab in the global adjustments and click on my process details independently. I'm just going to click and you see immediately that that resolves all of those issues that were starting in this image. The halos, the noise, the smoothness, now I'm going to hit it again so it's as simple as that. Now one thing to be aware of within this HDR collection is that is the only difference between the heavy pop grunge and the heavy pop smooth. So if you start to see something you don't necessarily uh, like within the image such as noise and halos, you can come down to this heavy pop smooth, still keep all of the color adjustments, all of the exposure adjustments, and just process independently right there. So that is my first tip for you, and this is something you can do in both black and white effects and adjust, and we'll go into that in just one second. I'm going to cancel out of here and go on to another image. My tip number two was to be aware of that brush out technology within Topaz Adjust 5, because again, as you push and pull your image in several different directions, that exposure it might do really ugly things to flat areas, and this is an example of how 
how it can start to look just way over processed. So I'm going to go into Topaz Adjust 5 and I'm going to go to this Heavy Pop Smooth which has that process details independently, but even with that checked, you still at times may have some issues. Here's before, here's after. If you really like what's going on in your foreground here, which I do kind of like this, I might go in and use the transparency slider and tone it down just a bit, but I'm pretty happy with it. But in my sky, I'm really unhappy with the noise and the banding that is starting. And this can happen for multiple of reasons, but basically that information just wasn't there to to really push and pull in that sky. It was pretty light to begin with. And to add all that color information along with the exposure just started to, to take it in a bad direction. So the only thing I'm going to do for this image is to go in my local adjustments and go to my brush out feature, which is awesome. I'm so happy we now have this in adjust because that means you, you eliminate having to make a mask within Photoshop or your host program. So I'm just going to go to brush out. I'll keep my brush size about this size. That'll be fine. Maybe a little bit higher. My opacity, I'm going to take it all the way up so you can see that immediate uh, change. The hardness is fine. And then I'm going to keep it very edge aware. The edge aware difference, actually let me take it down to zero so you can see. If I make a stroke over the sky and the grass, You'll notice that down here in the masking area, it's a just a normal brush. There's nothing special about it, and it affected both my grass and my sky. Now, if I take my edge aware up, I make that same stroke, but oops, what happened? Oh, sorry, just needed to turn the local adjustment on. <laughs> I make the same stroke, just being careful to keep my crosshairs of my brush on the sky and not the grass. I can easily come in and take it out of my sky without fearing that I'm going to take it out of my grass. And you can see my brush is going over my grass quite a bit. And I'm also going to take it out of the water here. All right, so that quickly, as you can see down here in this masking area, it's a very smart brush and it does eliminate exactly where you want it based on the color. So here's before. Here's after. I've kept my foreground and I've eliminated that kind of uh, over-processed look up top. The last thing I want to show you is the smooth brush. The first program we'll go into for this is black and white effects. I've already made a copy of my background and I'm just, I think this will be really beautiful in black and white effects because it has so many different tones going on. So I'm going to hop on in there. I'm going to press reset all and I'm going to first go down to my warm tone 3. I like this warm tone preset. Here's before and after. And then I'm going to come up into my conversion. What I'm trying to do, it looks a little smooth still and I really want to highlight my details quite a bit. So I'm thinking that my detail independent or processing independently checkbox is checked for this particular preset. So I'm going to open up my adaptive exposure, take my adaptive exposure up, my regions up, really start to see some detail come into those highlights. And I'm going to uncheck this. There we go. Now I start to see that detail in the exposures that I wanted in my foreground. Again, here's with the process independent checked. Just smooths it out too much for me for this particular image. So I'm going to leave it unchecked. But as I take a look at the entire image, my sky looks pretty rough. It looks pretty overdone. When I go one to one and check it out at 100 percent and look at my sky, I notice that all that hidden noise that I couldn't really see in the color image, well you can see it quite a bit, but it was really, it's really obvious in this black and white conversion. To be able to battle this while still uh, not checking my process independent checkbox, because I, I want in my foreground all of this detail enhancement which this would take away. I'm going to come into my local adjustments and go to the smooth brush. The smooth brush is something that is can be really obvious so you want to be a little bit um, 
you don't want to go too overboard with it because you don't want to smooth things too much. But the idea is just to, let's keep the opacity maybe at about 0.5. My strength is fine at 0.2. I am going to keep this very edge aware. My brush size, I'll keep my hardness, I'll take up just a little bit. And all I'm going to do is come over my sky area that I want to work with and start to brush that out a bit. And you'll notice some of that noise will start to just be a little bit more subtle. Let me show you a before and after so you can really see the difference. But it hasn't gone to smoothing it so bad that anybody looking at the image would notice. Here's before. Here's after. So just smooth it out just a little and takes away that harshness that might start in your skies in certain types of imagery. The last thing I want to show you is my image of my girl here. I'm just going to take this one into Adjust 5 and we're going to kind of go over the same I'm going to go to Reset All, the same workflow. I'm going to go to Heavy Pop Smooth because I'm looking at skin and I don't want to take it to the grungy side so I'll take Smooth. Here's Before and after, and that's a little too much for me, so I'll go to medium pop smooth, again before and after. I really like what it's doing to the rest of the image, but her face, it's gotten a little bit, uh, a little bit rougher using adjust. Here's before and after. What I'd like to do is smooth it out because I want to keep the color that this particular preset brought to her cheeks and brought to her eyes, but I don't want to keep the texture that it brought to her face, to her skin. So all I'm going to do again is go into my local adjustments. If I brushed it out completely, I would use, I would lose the color enhancements that I, what was brought to her face and her cheeks and her lips. So instead I'm going to use the smooth. I'm going to go over the same process I just did in black and white effects. Keep it 100% edge aware. I'm going to brush out, no, we'll take the smoothness down to about Point six, and see what that does. Okay, and as I brush over her face, it starts to smooth out. This is just great for portraiture. Not only is it smoothing the texture out a little bit, but it's also smoothing out any sort of blemishes that were happening on her skin to begin with. So that's kind of a perk. So here's before and after. All right, everybody, we have come up on our 15-minute mark. I hope these tips um, help you to manage your noise and halos that might start occurring. Again, they're very simple tips, but if you don't know about them, you don't know how easy it is to get rid of those blemishes that might come to your images that, that you really um, start to show that it's a little over-processed. So just using that independent checkbox, the brush out, and the smooth brushes are my tips for the day. All right, everybody, thanks so much, and have a great afternoon. Bye-bye.